Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video, I have picked up a few contracts that I think will work well together. And those all have to do with Joule. And the first one is this build new orbital station around Tylo. And that requires a facility supporting at least five Kerbals, but we don't actually have to have them on. And a mobile processing lab on the station. And the usual stuff, the antenna docking port and can generate power. And the next thing is this position a satellite in equatorial orbit of Val. It's uncrewed probe, antenna can generate power, uh, needs a gravioli detector, but that's it. Just needs to be in orbit around Val. And if we send the orbital station uncrewed, then it will suffice to be a uncrewed satellite. Now, there's also a orbital station around Paul, and this is the complicated one. He needs a facility supporting at least eight Kerbals, a mobile pest processing lab, so that's already on the Tylo one anyway. And uh, the catch is we have to have 5,000 units of ore. Now, obviously, we're not going to send that ore. We will get the ore from Paul as the intention because Paul is small and should be easy to land on. And uh, yeah, we will just uh, drill for ore. And so the kind of station we're going to send is a station with an ISR unit and drills. Tylo, Val, Lath, and Paul. Can we do it? Can we put all this stuff together? Well, let's find out. Well, one thing that has occurred to me, and it's a little bit inconvenient, we haven't actually gotten the large holding tank for the ore. So we're going to have to strap on a whole bunch of little ore tanks in order to make up the volume that we need, 5,000 units. So that's a bit sad. Okay, so this is quite a contraption, and it's a contraption with not a lot of thrust. As you can see, I'm on Paul vacuum right now, and we've got a thrust weight ratio of 3.72. Lots of delta V, amazingly enough, and that's because we're using a nerve engine. And the catch is that we have to lift 5,000 units of ore off of Paul after we've drilled for it. I hope there's some ore on Paul, otherwise this is not going to work out. Obviously, we have to have a scanner to find that out. But, uh, yeah, if we fill up all the ore, and we have 18 of these 300-unit ore canisters, so that's 5,400 units altogether, a little bit more than we need. We need 5,000. Uh, we have a thrust weight ratio of 1.65, which it will and they'll be able to deliver the full delta v in three uh, 30 minutes a little bit over 30 minutes 32 minutes in a bit so yeah well but i mean we can lift off of paul with the 5000 units that's the important part and of course the fuel tanks are filled up in this case it's just liquid fuel except for one little liquid fuel and oxidizer tank because we need oxidizer for the stupid fuel cell the fuel cell array is here uh, we won't have a Kerbal on board, uh, so we won't have the engineering bonus. And as far as, it, it's it's an awkward balance. Going from the bottom to the top, I've only put one drilling unit. And to counterbalance the fact that we have only one drilling unit here, I've put the fuel cell array and one Mark I crew cabin. So we have two crew in the, mo uh, potentially, in the mobile processing lab, uh, two in this crew cabin, two in this crew cabin, and then two in this crew cabin. But it's asymmetrical. There's only... One crew cabin here, and then that's counterbalanced by the drill. Well, uh, and then the fuel cells over here. So that's how that balance works. And then we have the scanner sticking out here on a hinge. That's 0.34 tons. And of course, uh, we will eventually have that poke out like that and extend. Uh, we're counterbalancing that by the Oscar B fuel tank, the docking port, and these radiators, and some science. Uh, we've got extra solar panels up there. Of course, we have the antenna. Anyway, we did remember the gravioli detector. And of course, we have the ISR unit. Otherwise, uh, we won't be able to make use of the ore. So this is our Paul driller. It's really tall. Um, I put a little, um, what you've got, uh, uh, Probodobodine Octo 2. And we otherwise don't have... Uh, Reaction wheel, so we've got a reaction wheel. Of course, the nerve doesn't gimbal, so we need the reaction wheel and a pretty powerful one. Otherwise, we're going to be in a bad state. 
Uh, as you can see, with the ore, this is 97 tons. Fortunately, we are not lifting off with that ore. We're planning to drill for it. So, we are not having the ore. We've got 3,300 meters per second, but I would like to use all of that in the jewel system to get to our locations. Right? We've got a lot of places to go to. Probably, um, first we'll capture around... Uh, and we haven't got the little uh, probe that I wanted to send into the atmosphere and land on Lathe to get that science. But we need to get into orbit around Tylo, orbit around Val, and orbit around Paul. We might save the Val option for last after we get the stuff from Paul because the Paul is most lucrative and what this is mostly designed around. It's got the eight Kerbal thing. So we might uh, make orbit around Tylo, break orbit around Tylo, and then go off to uh, Paul. And then after we do the Paul thing, you do the Val thing. And uh, But along the way, we'll have to drop off that probe into the atmosphere of Lathe. So that's the idea. Uh, let me work on the probe and the launcher. So the launcher has to be able to send 43 tons, uh, let's say 45 tons plus the probe into the atmosphere of, well, not into the atmosphere, into a transjewel trajectory. Okay, I've tried to keep things simple otherwise. I just mounted the little probe over here on the decoupler so it'll plop off there hopefully it doesn't hit anything and it has a little bit of RCS to the orbit itself it'll need to remain in communication with the driller itself as it goes into uh, leaf atmosphere unless we happen to have some uh, something else it can communicate with with these little surface mount commutrons I put two even though I don't think they combine uh, just for balance and obviously a parachute, we've got uh, gravioli and also a uh, accelerometer and some battery power. No, elect uh, no solar panels uh, because we'd hardly get any solar power anyway. Uh, so hopefully we'll get some signs that we can transmit with this, just a 200. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, so we'll find out. If it doesn't work, you know, we can send another probe. That's probe. It's just a bonus mission, if you will. We know what the main mission is. And here we have a stage with uh, two wolfhounds that will send us over to Jewel. And otherwise, I was thinking of creating a reusable launcher. Uh, this, these are 5 meter parts here. They're huge. And we've got 2.5 meter tanks here. And we've got a grand total of 10 mainsails. I was thinking of making it a reusable thing and putting a core at the bottom here on the center node of the engine plate. But I calculated that I'd need 100 parachutes. And I don't feel like it right now. How much does uh, would 100 parachutes cost anyway? 40,000. Hmm. I mean, we could recover it. And this is... I mean, it's not... Uh, well, that some of it's fuel cost, but... And fuel costs a lot more in Kerbal than it does in real life, but still, I think we'll just keep it simple for now. Uh, if we get, I think, even one contract done, it'll pay for the rockets, so yeah. Hopefully we don't have to do anything excessive. That engine plate doesn't need to happen at all. Mm, that's just... Of course, everything is messed up as far as giving us the Delta V figures. Well, I need to time warp to the jewel window, and we will see if this works out. Oh, as it so happens, we are at the window already. I did not need to time warp. It is the jewel window. We are we are in a good situation. So, all right, let's go. All right. Well, it's admittedly difficult to get a sense of scale with this thing, but to me, it looks vaguely Russian or Soviet, and. I guess that's a good sign. So throttle up, SAS is on, and ig no, I don't have to ignite separately from launch. Let's just launch. Let's get that all together. All right, launch. And we're going up. Do these plumes look different? I guess I should try out Waterfall in this install before trying it out elsewhere to see if I like it. 
I don't know, on the in the screenshots for Waterfall, they look too clean. These obviously aren't working great, <laughs> the plumes, I mean. Uh, I mean, I think maybe I need to bump up the particle count or something. Okay, throttling down. I guess we can get rid of the fairing since I left it at confetti and so things won't collide with anything. It certainly has enough extra delta V to return. But then again, we haven't put the parachutes on yet. Nicer plume up here, though. But what do I know about plumes? I know nothing about plumes. Okay, uh, it's lopsided, but I'll take it. Um, we should have deorbited this. Hey, maybe we can do something with it. Who knows? I keep saying that, but we haven't done the whole debris mm, removal slash reuse idea yet. Sure looks good on the back end. All right, separation and preparation of the wolfhounds. Well, actually, hmm, that little probe is going to bump into that scanner. <laughs> we'll have to watch out for that. Okay, but for now... Uh, I think we'll just do a mid-course adjustment to pull that up. So uh, that will be our initial approach, and then the mid-course adjustment will fix it, and then we'll see about the timing for a potential Tylo-assisted capture or Lathe-assisted capture after that. Since we need to go to both, either one will do. Okay, really big stage is a safe distance away, and burn. Okay, it's wandering off. And shut down. All right. Let's see. So up we go. A little bit tilted there. Timing maybe, but we have we have an encounter that's a little bit off. But I think we can just run with it if we could get a node on our outward bound trajectory. There we go. And pulling it up. Yeah, it's either crashing into Jewel or it's crashing into Tylo. Uh, well, it was a life encounter, but I think that's too late. That's after we die. Um, that's a loose orbit around Tylo. 1,667. Pretty expensive. Okay, I'll have to think about that one. We might not do that maneuver. We might do a few flybys before actually capturing around Tylo. It might be easier to get some help from the other moons. Okay, what is our situation after that correction? It claims I would be going around the opposite direction like this, and I think I'm crashing into Tylo. This whole business I don't like. <laughs> this is... This is too complicated. There's a lathe encounter there. Hmm. All right, let's get over there. Let's get over there and see what the heck is going on. Okay, we've entered Jewel SOI. Let's jump to the driller again. Well, now, okay, so that's uh, a lot of stuff going on. Tylo encounter, that seems to come with a periapsis right now, but then if we correct it, it doesn't. And then it goes all swirly. <laughs> goes all over the place after that. Okay, let's review. So, Tylo periapsis is safe. Leif periapsis is safe. And jewel periapsis is safe. So we'll do this. And go. And... Eh, uh, probably close enough. It was touchy though. Let's see. Let's verify all our periapses. So, Tylo, check. Leif. Sorta. Jewel, maybe. <laughs> it's flashing. Um, we'll go past Silo first and we'll see. Maybe we'll need to do another correction to get 
a better lace situation. Uh, maybe we can plot that. I don't know. But with it flashing, maybe it'll resolve it. I don't know. Well, that minimizes the relative inclination. So we'll keep it there. And so there'll be another correction burn right there after we pass Tylo. I guess we can check whether we can do some science. We only have two little things. Gravity data, ah, uh, it's only for recovery. And the seismometer isn't going to do anything here. So we proceed. Here's the correction burn ahead of the lathe encounter. Let's see what the periapsis is. 98, and that's a fine periapsis around Joule. Now, the thing is, dropping off the little probe. The probe has to do a radial burn into lathe atmosphere. Hopefully it has enough. It's all RCS. Okay, well, I'm going to arm the parachute. <laughs> oh, shoot. And I probably should have reduced the decoupling force on this decoupler, but couple, decouple. Oop. Okay. All right. And it did knock into that, but it's not detrimental. And we still have comms, so that's good. Um, let's see. Radial in is not the thing it automatically does. Let's try this RCS. That is reducing our periapsis, that's good. There's lathe. It'll be the nighttime side, but we don't have solar panels or anything. We carried way too much mob propellant, but this was the best form factor tank that I could get. It's not like the parachute's gonna be over encumbered. The only issue is will oh shoot uh the line back is like that so when we hit here we might not have comms uh well maybe it'll bounce through that lathe station maybe yeah we might be in communication blackout with Kerbin when we get into the atmosphere i'm gonna go pretty deep into the atmosphere to ensure that we go down Okay, surface, retrograde, change of camera, completely ignoring our mission that's passing by, because it should end up in a safe orbit around Joule, at least on this orbit. Now I should put the core on hibernate. Auto hibernate. Sure hope this is low enough. Ah, we lost comms. No good thing I primed the parachute and everything. Ooh. G-forces are serious. Ooh, serious G-forces. Wow. Still too much of later. <laughs> it's always too much of later. Well, we're coming down. And maybe it's plasma blackout, or maybe it's just outright no communications. Uh, it's outright no communications. Well, again, good thing the parachutes are ready. That was serious re-entry right there. So let's just see what the... I mean, we've got a line back to the Paul driller ship, but the problem is the Paul driller ship doesn't have a line back home. We'll have to... There's still a chance. We'll have to wait until the Leif station comes around. Okay, well, I really shouldn't have been time warping when it splashed down. Okay, so it splashed down, and we will wait until that leaf station is coming around, and keep an eye on the Paul driller ship, but that should be in a good situation overall. Okay, uh, we have comms. All right, Gravioli. But how much power do we have? Transmit. Ah, we don't have enough to make it successful. I should put more batteries. There's not going to be enough electric charge. 
Uh, oh well. Yeah, I'll need much more electric charge for that. Well, little attempt at a... at a lathe probe. Minor side mission, not critical. Okay, so I've plotted a capture around Tylo, and it's not gonna cost too much now. So we boost our orbit up first, and uh, we do that at the apoapsis there, and that will avoid this val encounter. We go around like that, and we hit Tylo here. I'd like to hit here, but the timing isn't quite right. Uh, and so we hit it here, and right there we can capture with just 177 meters per second after lifting our orbit up with 567. So then we shouldn't take too much to break orbit, and we can move on to Paul. I think that would do it. Uh, that's what I want to do. All right. So that being the plan, let's go. Okay, and it's nerve time. Ooh, those panels though. Go away. Ah, the nerve. We will have a good periapsis and we will be able to capture. So, okay, on to Tylo. Hopefully the burn time indication is correct. It's not very big burn, but this nerve can take a long time even with trivial burns. Make sure our comms are good. Yes, they are. Okay. Capturing. Fizz warp, please. Well, I think we are in orbit. Let's see. Yeah. So we don't need to go any lower. And we just need to... Hey, we got it. We maintain stability for 10 seconds and we got the contract done. So now I need to get to Paul. When should we go from Tylo to Paul? It's a good question. Paul should be ahead of Tylo. This might not be the worst time, actually. So like that, we're going to take some extra time. Doesn't cost too much. I guess we'll just do these two burns. We'll just exit out now. We have to get into a polar orbit around Paul for the scanning. Okay, we are going out. And now, out here, we just wait, I think. I think that's close enough to Paul right now. So, 77 kilometer periapsis, 12 days. Hopefully nothing interferes with us within those 12 days. Let's find out. So leaving Tylo. Tylo's would be Tylo would be the leading candidate for something that could interfere with us. Because our periapsis is still very close to Tylo's orbit. Okay, looking good so far. I think it's just one more orbit. Okay, we have regained comms just in time. And turning for the burn, we're a little bit late, but it shouldn't make a difference. I think we don't actually need to convert the ore into liquid fuel in order to get back into orbit around Paul. I think we'll have enough, just with the liquid fuel we're already carrying. Of course, we would still have needed the ISR unit to convert it to liquid fuel and oxidizer for the fuel cell. Otherwise, we wouldn't have enough power to drill, I think. It's possible the solar panels are not as bad as I think they are around here, but I believe we probably need the fuel cell to get enough ore, the 5,000 units of ore. I don't know right now how much Delta V it's going to take to capture, but it shouldn't be too much, right? Well, it's a bit, but it's not too bad. Well, we really need to be at a better inclination right now. So we need to make a correction right away. Okay, that looks polar. Or polar. Um, <laughs> sorry. They were showing fancified versions of Paul for KSP2. 
on the KSP Twitter teasing us way way too early that should qualify and our periapsis is still okay just need to go to retrograde now verify that we will have communication um, I think so at periapsis they'll be up top there okay and burn okay we've captured around Paul but we do not have the 5,000 units of ore so whoop, 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 enough that's a nice orbit for now so we have to figure out can we get it now is the moment of truth it is time for the resource scanner to do its thing Okay, perform oral survey and it is done so we got science and there's some ore but let's see the concentrations cut off cut off oh it all disappears at 50 percent even all right um i would like to land in an equatorial location Let's see, which way around are we? We don't need that node anymore. Oh, Paul doesn't rotate very quickly. I'd like to be on the daylight side, even though we're not dependent on solar panels, especially since the line back is that way. So we certainly want to be on this side. Here, everything else we could probably figure out. So. Yeah, it's going to be a long landing burn because of the nuke, though. Let's wait till we come around so it's not constantly changing our heading. And yeah, retrograde. Let's go with surface. Okay, time to land this huge thing. Yep, the thrust to weight ratio on this is something special. And it's got to be worse once we put the ore in. Oh, there's more of a slope than I thought. <laughs> well, hopefully the low gravity is forgiving. Yeah, that's a slope. Can it even hold on to itself on that slope? I'm trying to be gentle here. Uh uh, okay, okay. Maybe it'll work out. Deploy the drill. Oh, oh no, the drill is pushing us. The drill is pushing us. Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god. Start service harvester. Quick, weigh us down with ore. Okay. I'm gonna start LFO. And it reads oxidizer full, so it's not converting, and it's just putting more ore into the tanks, which is fine. But this is very iffy. And starting fuel cell, which it doesn't need right now because it's got a lot of charge. Uh, the drill, maybe having symmetric drills would have been a better idea. Yeah. Okay, can I time warp? Okay, because it's going to take a while to get 5,000 ore otherwise. All right, we are proceeding. It's working. It's working. Oh, <gasps> no. Oh, come on. I'm all deaf fouring and we're, we're going to we're going to see about this. Okay, well, I restarted, and it says it's landed at Paul, so, well, that's better than exploded at Paul, but they don't actually say that, so we'll see in how many pieces it's landed at Paul. Okay, so so it's still, it's still in all pieces, and it just started drilling, it looks like, and we did not turn on the fuel cell, or, yeah, we did not turn in the on the fuel cell yet. Okay. 
So that last uh, time warp step was a doozy. We'll t keep an eye on the radiators. We might need them to cool, but it was on the nighttime side. They should be able to cool on the nighttime side better than on the daylight side. I'm just saying. Okay, let's see. Time warp. No, thermal control system doesn't read anything yet. No, it, it's definitely growing. It's definitely growing. Oh, oh, it's going, it's going exponential here. Let's see, it's sort of leveled out. No, now it's going down. But it went up in a hurry. Um, one more step up, staying at twenty percent there. It's weird. I'll, uh, that the last time warp step it was what killed us last time, so I'm not doing that. Oh, uh, okay. The oxidizer is diminishing. I guess it, uh, the one fuel cell isn't enough to provide the power. And so in nighttime, because it didn't provide the power, but we've lost comms as well. That's a little bit inconvenient. Uh, but because it couldn't provide the power, that didn't provide enough power for the thermal control system. Is that what happened? We're gonna need comms for me to be able to fix that though. Okay, so our oxidizer is running out and we're about to lose power. Our comm line would go this way. And it's gonna be a while before we get comms back, so that's an issue. Oh, when I come out of time warp, the cooling goes up. When I time warp, is there like a time warp where the cooling is not going to go up? <laughs> it's going, it's, it's pretty low here, but my electric charge is dying. You know, the cooling is going down. Insufficient power shutting down. Okay, that's, yep, not enough electric charge, right? Okay, we have electric charge. Okay, it seems like just the final time warp step is what killed us. Otherwise, everything works. So, we're gonna keep drilling. It's stopped that, and I'm gonna start it up again. And our ISR unit will be started again. And power is being generated by the fuel cell. It's very precarious, but we continue. Depending on the time warp step, uh, the cooling changes. Can we get to 5,000 before we get into nighttime again? Oh, sun setting. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, a lot of a lot of those things popped up suddenly. Uh, no, no. Um, uh, shut down the ISR. Stop. Stop the drill. Stop anything that makes... no. Please, cool down. Oh, if I time warp, will it cool down? Or if I time warp, will it go up? It's stuck on 100. It must be some math error. I don't know if it would be a good idea to retract the radiator or not. I also don't know if it's a good idea to time warp or not. Time warping seems to do things. Well, I can always alt F4. Maybe I should go to, tra if I go to tracking station and come back, will it blow up? Gosh darn it. I don't even know. Um, the time warping does not seem to help, but the part heats aren't going up. Okay, it's cooling off now. Hmm. It's convenient that sunset coincides with us losing communication, too. Okay, let's ease back out of time warp. It's gonna bounce and stuff. Oh, as we deploy the drill again, it's probably gonna... Ooh, it's lit a little bit. Okay, start service harvester, start LFO. We should get up to 5,000 ore this time. Keeping an eye out for sudden indications of heating. That happened suddenly last time. 
Okay, we're pretty close to 5,000. We don't need bonus. Oh, oh, it's going up. Look at that. Oh, shoot. If, as I come out of time warp, it's increasing the... the cooling thing. If I go up in time warp, it goes down. If I go down in time warp, it goes up. Uh, it's going up really fast there. I want my 5,000, though. Okay, 5,000. Uh, okay, am I out of time warp? 92%. Okay, shut down everything. Stop. Stop that drill. Track the drill. It recognizes that I've got 5,000, right? Yes, we have everything except putting our station in orbit. Well, uh, we probably should let the thermal control system cool down a bit before running the nuke, huh? Well, I'm gonna go anyway. Uh, 860 meters per second, 1.85 thrust to weight ratio. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Make sure not to tip or anything. Okay. At least there's no atmosphere. I want to go prograde, so we go eastward. Okay, the cooling seems to be stable. Oh, oh, the, 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 oh, the cooling, it's gone up, it's gone up. Let me shut down for a sec. Okay, now it's going down again. <laughs> Uh, we, we do need to get to orbit now. I can't be shutting off the engine willy-nilly. A low throttle. Okay, well, it reads it as an orbit, but we should probably clear a little bit. It actually read this as stable because the acceleration is so low. It accepted it as a stable situation but yeah we're, we're a little bit low on the periapsis considering how bumpy paul is i'll let it go for some time but we fulfilled the contract we got the 5000 ore that leaves the matter of this position satellite in equatorial orbit of val to deal with i don't know if we want to send it to val though maybe some other probe would be good there okay our apoapsis is getting high Maybe this is okay, but let's boost it up. Let's boost it up. All right. Well, hopefully the power situation is not unpredictable going forward. And actually, uh, I don't know if we've scanned Val before. That should factor into my considerations. Do we have we done the resource scanning of Val? No, we haven't. So actually, this polar orbit would be great for that research, uh, resource scanning. So yeah, we'll... Oh, no, that's not, it's not polar orbit, it's uh, zero inclination. Well, that's made it substantially worse. Okay, I'll have to think about that. Uh, but for now, I think uh, this achievement is a worthwhile place to stop. We have managed to lift this off of Paul and do the things. And what a interesting contraption to actually be a success. With that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.